Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest. Breaking a trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King, on your husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. A little thought, a few moments of planning can change your whole existence. You can have security instead of worries about the future if you start now to invest regularly in United States savings bonds. For regular systematic saving, two plans have been set up for your convenience. The payroll savings plan where you work and the bond a month plan where you bank. With the payroll savings plan, you authorize your employer to set aside a certain sum each payday and invest the money in bonds for you. On the bond a month plan, for those who are not on a payroll, you authorize your bank to issue bonds to you each month and charge the purchase price to your checking account. Bonds may be redeemed any time after two months at the purchase price plus interest. Remember, savings bonds are absolutely safe and are protected against loss, theft, or destruction. Now, even better, invest more in savings bonds. This message is brought to you as a public service. Jim Vale had been in the Northwest Mounted Police only a little over a year when he was assigned as constable to the district Felker. Jim was young and ambitious to make good on the job. One day, he sat going over reports when one of the townsmen hurriedly entered. You better come quick. What's the trouble, Mr. DeWitt? Three crooks held up the trading post and wounded the storekeeper. I'll go right over. I'll go with you. All right, let's go. I saw him get in the way, constable. I was just coming out of the cafe across the street and I heard a muffled shot. And saw three crooks run out the store, head out the south trail with the dog sled. Did you get a good look at them? Well, they were all bundled up in carpets, but I did notice one was a big fella, bigger than the other two. Did anyone go for the doctor? Yes, I reckon the doctor's the store, but now maybe Mike will be able to give a good description of the crooks. Oh, don't count on that. Mike's unconscious. Doubt if he'll be able to talk for some time. In that case, I'm wasting time going over there. I'll get my dog team and start out before those crooks have a chance to get too far. The three crooks, who had about half an hour's start on the constable, moved along the trail a couple of miles ahead. Hey, Fancy, Mark, one of you better get off the sled and go on foot. We're not making good time with a load of two of you for the dogs to pull. Ho, oh, oh, ho, you husky. Oh, oh, oh. Well, come on, don't just sit there. One of you get off the sled. Oh, let Frankie try it away. No, oh. I have a sore foot, Josh. Mark should be the one. Oh, for Pete's sake, both of you get off the sled. I'll ride a while and let Frenchy drive. Mark, you run along on foot. Uh, thank you. Nobody in town that failed us. Except that young constable. We can handle him. We'll handle him if we have to. But we might as well put as much distance behind us as we can. Do you really think that young constable will try to trail us alone, Gus? Uh, he's just a type that would, Frenchy. And I hope he does, for that matter, without waiting for any help. Well, I'm ready to ride. Get moving, Frenchy. All right. We am getting very cold and hungry. After we put a few more miles behind us, we'll stop and rest and get some food. Now, get going. We... Mark the Rusky! The three crooks turned off the main trail a mile or so further on and took to the frozen surface of a creek where the wind-swept ice left no tracks. Finally, they approached a deserted cabin. Uh, ho! Ho, there, ho! The sooner I get inside out of this wind, the better I will like it. Come on, let's go. Later, the crook Mark glanced out the cabin window hey, and then got to his feet excitedly. Hey, look, coming along the trail. The constable. Yeah. Yeah, so it is. 
He's heading for the cab. Well, what are we going to do, Gus? Ah, don't get excited. He's only one month. When he gets closer, I'll take a shot at him from the doorway. That'll stop him. Gus, that's not good to shoot him out. I know what I'm doing, Frenchy. Just leave it to me. I'll have my gun ready. Here goes. Did you get him? Yeah. He dropped like a log. Come on, we'll go bring him into the cabin. A short time later, Constable Jim Vale lay unconscious on a bunk in the cabin. The three crooks stood over him. Yeah. The bullet creased his temple, Gus. He got a bad bump on the back of his head. Yeah, must have hit a chunk of ice when he fell. What are we going to do with him? I noticed some of the dead trapper's clothes are still in that old trunk over there. We'll take off the Mounty's clothes, put his uniform in the trunk, and dress him in the trapper's outfit. Huh? Why do that? Before we go on, we'll toss him into the ravine back of the cabin. When and if he's found, they'll think he's just some trapper who's had an accident. Now, let's get busy. The constable's uniform was put into the bottom of the old trunk yeah, under other clothing. He was dressed in the clothes left by the dead trapper. Yeah, now, A few minutes after the change had been completed, the constable opened his eyes. Hey, Gus. Come through. Uh, well, that's uh, well, my gun button. Well, I'm... Uh, I can't remember what happened. Hey, wait a minute, fellas. I want to ask you something. Uh, hey, you remember coming to this cabin, fella? No. No, I, I... I don't seem to remember anything. Who are you? You know who you are, don't you? Well, I... Uh, that's strange, but I don't. I can't remember my own name. Hey, what is it? Oh, I... quiet. I heard of it. Hey, fella. Hey, hey, maybe you'd remember if I told you your name is Pete. Pete? Uh-huh. Is, is that my name? I, I just can't well, see now, it. don't let it worry you now. You'll be all right. Look, you slipped on the ice outside when we were coming in here and got a bump on your head. That's all. I... I was with you, man. Oh, sure. <laughs> well, your pal, Pete. Oh, my head. I... <laughs> ah, you don't remember that either, huh, Pete? No, no, I don't remember. This... This bandit. Well, look. Let me tell you exactly what happened and how things are. And then maybe you'll gradually get your memory back. Oui, that's right. Tell him, Gus. Oh, so strange. I... It's swear I never saw any of you before. Well, think hard now, Pete. Look. I'm Gus. That's French. Hello. And he's Mark. We've been your pals for some time. We've all worked together on lots of robbery. Haven't we, fellas? But of course, Gus. Yeah. Sure, that's right. Well, worked together on on robberies, did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to him, fellas. Talking like he's reformed or something. <laughs> that's sure. <right. laughs> yeah, with the entire Mountie Force looking for him as well as us. It just doesn't make sense. I can't believe I ever robbed anyone. Oh, you can't, eh? And I suppose you can't believe you ever killed anyone what? either. Killed? You mean to say oh, I... no, 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 no. Take it easy. Take it easy. Well, come over here anyway, Pete. Don't tell me a bump on the head can change you that much. Why, the bullet crease you got from the constable before you killed him didn't save you at all. Oh, now, look, I... All this is strange to me. If I could only remember, I... I have to remember. Oh, now, take it easy. I... Get them sleep for a while. And we'll talk what again. Is it, I... Come on, fellas. We'll play cards for a while and let's some break. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, mothers, take it from the kids. The breakfast treat that can't be beat is Quaker Puff Rice and Quaker Puff Wheat. They're the winner for sure. First of all, they're the winner for crisp, delicious taste, because they're the ones shot from guns. Quaker Pop wheat and Quaker Pop rice are actually exploded up to eight times normal size. They're popped to perfection. And they're the winner for sunny, natural flavor, a harvest of flavor that Mother Nature herself puts into the good, wholesome grain. So when Dad and the youngsters pour out a bowlful of swell-tasting Quaker Pop rice or Quaker Pop wheat, you can be sure there's no factory sweetening, no sugar added. Yes, that's the beauty of Quaker Pop rice and wheat. The youngsters like to put sugar on them themselves, lots of it, and the grown-ups in the family may want to put on less sugar to suit their taste. 
Yes, look tomorrow at your store for delicious Quaker Pop wheat and Quaker Pop rice. You can spot them in the familiar packages with the picture of the big gun on the front. Now to continue. The young constable, Jim Vale, whom the crooks now call Pete, fell into a deep but troubled sleep. The state of amnesia, which had been brought about by the blow on the back of his head, caused him to forget his entire past life. He had no reason for not accepting the story told by the crooks. And yet the idea that he was a crook and a killer was revolting to his real nature. He tossed and turned through the night. The following morning awoke, still troubled, but still with a complete loss of memory. Well, Pete... You look much better this morning. Guess after that long rest, you remember who we are now, don't you? No. No, I don't. All I remember is what you told me last night. Well, it's the truth anyway. In my dreams, I I saw uniforms. Mounties. That's one thing that bothers me. <laughs> well, easy to see why after you plugged one of them. There were three of you last night, weren't there? Yeah, but Frenchie took one of our dog teams and went back to town to get supplies for our getaway. Since you eliminated the constable, it... It's safe enough for him to go. If I could only think back. Oh, you'll gradually get your memory back, so stop worrying. I'm glad you're able to get up this morning. We'll be ready to hit the trail for the border this afternoon. You seem fit enough to travel now. Listen, you just forget all this, and let's have some coffee. That morning, Sergeant Preston and his great husky Yukon King arrived in Selkirk and stopped at the constable's office. Hey, 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 What? Strange Vale isn't on duty. Maybe we'll find him uptown. Come on, boy. We'll leave the team here till we come back. <laughs> As Sergeant Preston and King headed along the main street, they met one of the townsmen. Well, hello, Sergeant. Glad to see you. Hello, Mr. DeWitt. You seen the constable this morning? Yeah, he started out to trail three crooks yesterday afternoon, Sergeant. Huh? They robbed the trading post and wounded Mike. Yeah, the constable hasn't come back yet. I see. I've been thinking a young fellow like that wouldn't have much chance against three tough crooks. But he was anxious to get right after him. Which way are they going? They took the south trail, Sergeant. Too bad you weren't here to go along with Constable Jim. Yes, it is. I'll try to pick up his trail and go after him. He may have run into trouble. Thanks for the information, DeWitt. Come along, King. Back to the team. <laughs> Later, Frenchie hurriedly arrived at the cabin. Oh, hold on there. Hold on. Hey, hey, Gus, I find out something important. What? That Mountie who has the big dog, Sergeant Preston. He was stopping at the constable's office just as I headed out of town. Sergeant <laughs> Preston, did you do it? Hey, that's bad for us. That uh, name mean anything to you, Pete? No. No, it doesn't. Should it? Yeah, in a way. When he finds out what you did to the constable, he'll be coming after him. What are we going to do? Look. Since Pete's the one who killed the constable, it's only right that he should be the one to go back along the trail and watch for that man. That's right. You mean you want me to go watch for him alone? Sure, I give you back your gun. You could go back along the trail, find a place to hide, and shoot him from ambush if he happens to follow him. Sure. It. Remember, Pete, if he catches you, you'll hang. We'll have the sled packed and ready when you get back. Now, you better get started, Pete. And for your own good, don't let that Mountie get past you. Remember, you have to get him first. <laughs> Well, all right, I, I'll do it. Sergeant Preston had gone to the constable's cabin with Yukon King so the intelligent dog could get the sail. He took one of the constable's old mittens, then drove his dog team to the south trail. Hurting! Hurting! This glove will give you the scent, boy. Now find him, King. Find the constable. Fine, boy. <laughs> All right, I'm fine. The constable, still troubled because of his loss of memory, had gone on foot about a mile back along the creek trail and hid behind a small ridge to wait for the arrival of Sergeant Preston. Meantime, the others back in the cabin chuckled over events as they hastily packed up to leave. Let's do it, fellas. Having the constable hold off Sergeant Preston and slug him while we light out for the boat. <laughs> we'll be far away when that crazy constable comes back to the cabin. <laughs> <laughs> he really believes he's a crook and a killer. Well, come on. We're ready to leave now. Frenchy, right, okay. you and Mark take our team. I'll drive the constable. All right, guys. Mark! Mark! 
Out along the trail, the constable waited patiently. Finally, he heard dogs that indicated the arrival of Sergeant Preston. I see him now. The money they expected. I have to shoot him. If I don't, he'll take me back for murder. As Sergeant Preston came within range, Constable Jim twice took aim, but hesitated to pull the trigger. No, I can't kill him in cold blood. I... I'll step out and face him. I'll give him a chance. Sergeant Preston drove his team along the trail. And as he approached the small ridge, a figure in nondescript clothing stepped out and called. Okay. Hey, Thank you. You might use that gun on you. Come along, fella. Slowly, with hands upraised, Sergeant Preston walked toward the man holding the gun on him. You'll not get away with this, mister. You're Constable Vale. What is this? Where's your uniform? Uniform? Constable. Now listen, Sergeant, I know why you came here. I'm not going back to hang. I've got to kill you. I don't understand this. You must be out of your head, Constable. Put down that gun. No, don't come any closer. My friends told me what happened and why you'd be coming here. Put down that gun and listen to reason, Constable. As Sergeant Preston talked, he signaled to the great dog King. The intelligent dog whined. <laughs> then, as if frightened, crept off to one side. The constable, his eyes fixed in a strange way on the man in uniform before him, failed to pay any attention to King. You'll not take me to hang. I'll have to use my gun and get the dog. <laughs> then forward, the great dog King sprang from one side, grabbing the constable's gun arm and dropping him to the ground. Oh. I have your gun. Come, uh, King. Easy, boy. Oh, oh my head. I... Oh, seems to have passed out. Constable. Constable. At his head when he fell. For a few moments, Preston worked over the constable. Then finally, the man opened his eyes. Uh, 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 Sergeant Preston, what happened? How did you get here? You don't remember what you just tried to do, constable? Why, yes, I... I tried to go to the cabin. There was a shop, and... That's all I know. Cabin? What cabin? The, the cabin right over there. I, where is it? They were inside. I know it was Easy. There. We'll get this all straightened out in a minute. Well, I... My uniform. Where is it? Where did I get these from? That's one of the things I'm going to find out. Now, what is this? I don't understand. Take it easy. I'm beginning to get all this. You must have lost your memory when you were shot. Do you remember anything at all that happened after you heard the shot at the cabin? No, nothing, Sergeant. Nothing until a moment ago when I opened my eyes and saw you bending over. Oh. I think I'll pick up your trail from here to the cabin. While we travel, I'll tell you what happened when I met you and what I heard in town. Come on, we'll get back to my sled. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Check and see. See if your whole family, the youngsters, dad and mom, don't prefer delicious Quaker Pop rice and Quaker Pop wheat for breakfast. Check and see how much you like the sunny, natural flavor of the good, wholesome grain. The sunny, natural flavor that old Mother Nature puts into it. These premium grains are never factory sweetened. Sugar is never added to them. And you mothers will double check on this. Some of your family will like their cereal not so sweet, while others will like it ever so sweet. Now here's the beauty of Quaker Pop rice and Quaker Pop wheat. The whole family can sweeten them with sugar or use no sugar at all, just as they prefer. You bet. That's the way to enjoy the sunny, natural flavor of the one shot from guns. Remember, Mom, to check and double check on the way everybody in the family goes for delicious, crisp, fresh Quaker Pop wheat and Quaker Pop rice. <laughs> to continue. After King found the scent and started up along the creek trail, Preston related what had happened. The constable was very much upset to think he had held a gun on the sergeant. But Preston told him to forget the matter and to tell him about the events up to the time the constable reached the cabin. After hearing how the young Mountie had immediately set out trailing the three crooks, Preston said, The cabin you speak of can't be too far since you were on foot, constable. The fact that you lost your memory probably saved your life. The entire time is flanked for me, sergeant. Well, there's a cabin just there. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Feel all right now, Constable? Oh, yes, sir. We'll circle around and approach from the rear. Let's go. Come on, King. Oh, oh. A short distance away, Preston 
short time later, the two Mounties, discovering the cabin was empty, went inside. Oh, I haven't been gone long. The fire's still smoldering. Do you recall being in here before? No, I don't. Hmm. We'll search the place, see if we can find any evidence that'll point to the cook. Let's get busy. The two Mounties started a thorough search of the cabin. Finally, Sergeant Creston went through the old trunk and found the constable's uniform on the bottom. Constable, look here. Your uniform. Oh, I'm sure glad you found that, Sergeant. Wasn't what we were looking for, but it's lucky we found it. Better put it on, Constable. Yes. Quickly, the constable removed the trapper's clothing he was wearing and put on his uniform. Yes, yes. Then he spoke. Oh, this feels more like it. Now, what do we do, Sergeant? Well, I'll have King pick up their trail out front. They must have taken your team. Come on, I'll we'll find those crooks and bring them back to Selkirk. Meanwhile, Gus, Frenchie, and Mark mushed along the south trail at a fast pace. I know that young Mounty must have blood pressure, eh, Mark? I hope so. Yeah, if he's going to be sore when he gets back to the cabin and finds we've left him. But what can he do? He will not dare go to town if he thinks he's wanted for murder. Yeah, that's right. Hey! Hey, wait a minute! Oh! Oh, oh, oh. What's the matter, Gus? Uh, hard line, bro. Need some help to fix it. All right, we might as well pull off the trail and rest the dogs a while till we get it fixed. Will you pull over behind that embankment of ice and snow to the left? Oui. We'll be out of the wind. We'll eat something too while we're stopped. Let's go. After fixing the tug line, the three crooks sat on blankets behind the embankment eating, while the dogs rested in the snow nearby. Yeah, we've been here too long already, fellas. We better start out again. No use of us. Hey, listen. Hey, that sounds like somebody coming down the trail. Yeah. Maybe something slipped up and that crazy constable didn't get pressed. Uh, what are we going to do if it is that money? We got guns, haven't we? We'll stay here and keep our eyes on the trail. If it is Sergeant Preston and that dog of his, we'll have a good chance to gun both of them from here. Look, coming around this bend down there. Looks like two Mounties got it. One is riding the sled. Yeah. Yeah, there are two. Get your guns ready. We, when they get well in range, we'll let them have it. Sergeant Preston with the constable and king came around the bend and headed along the trail until they were almost opposite the embankment where the three crooks were waiting. King, running a short distance ahead, suddenly stopped. Then, facing the embankment, barked to indicate the crooks had turned off the trail at that point. Oh, 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 oh
Just turn your radio dial to your mutual station and join the famous master detective, Nick Carter, on a suspense-filled case. For stirring and heartwarming tales of the Old West, a boy and his dog, there are the adventures of Rin Tin Tin. And more hard-riding, fast-shooting frontier exploits are brought to you by the ever-popular Western hero, Wild Bill Hickok. You can thrill to the operations of big city law enforcement with the public prosecutor. And the famous journalist Bob Considine presents colorful news sidelights in an easy-to-listen-to column of the air. You'll enjoy yourself more when you let your mutual friends keep you company every Sunday. Hear them every week over most of these stations. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston reporting for duty, sir. Are there any special instructions? Yes, Sergeant. I want you to go down to the dock, pick up a boy named Bobby Piggott who's waiting there. Shall I bring him to headquarters, sir? No, Sergeant. You're all leaving today for Sulphur City. Meet the boy and take him to his uncle's trading post. Bobby's an orphan, Sergeant. Do your best to make the trip pleasant for him. Very well, sir. Sergeant Preston doesn't know that Bobby isn't wanted at the trading post. Nor does he suspect that the boy's nagging money-mad uncle will force Bobby to turn to criminals for help. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company. Makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Mule Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, Radio Network for America.